Hello and welcome. Welcome back to those who've been following the tutorial series. Uh, welcome to those who've just jumped in to see a bit about uh, this particular uh, tutorial 18. Um, seems like only yesterday it was tutorial 1. Uh, my name is Eamon Killing. I've been doing a short set of tutorials on how to get used to using IBM software. Um, I thought after tutorial 17, which was all about endurance uh, and performance storage, uh, the iSCSI uh, storage capability delivered to you from um, IBM Software. I would continue the storage theme and we would cover the other show in town in terms of storage from uh, IBM Software. And that is to have your own controlled storage, to have your own capability to do what you want to do with storage. And to do that, you deploy a Quantastore, one or many uh, Quantastores, to deliver your storage. So, what are we going to be doing? Well, I thought I'd cover first what exactly is Quantastore storage. Um, well, it is, as, it, as I've said here, for those customers who want more control over their storage than possibly Endurance provides, even though you've got snapshots and remote replication, etc., with Endurance, and, and please feel free to go back and have a look at tutorial 17, um, which covered endurance storage. Um, OS Nexus's Quantastore is a specialized storage device, uh, an operating system entirely specialized around delivering storage. And when you marry that or meld that with the software bare metal server, with a lot of disks here, and you can see on the right, I've just drawn a little, um, a little diagram of how that could look, you can build up your own specific, specialized or customized uh, storage in the way you want to provide that. So you can order a bare metal machine, that's how you get to um, get to deliver your own Quantastore storage. And then you can split that machine up, uh, split those disks up in a multitude of different ways. Um, you can have NFS uh, or SIF shares, you can have uh, iSCSI LUNs, you can create a Gluster file system if you want. Um, you can set up your own remote replication between two Qantas stores, uh, one in you know Paris, one in London. Uh, you can thin provision, you can take snapshots, you have entire control. And we'll be having a look at the, uh, the web GUI to show you the, you know, the level of control that you have and the way in which you want to provide your storage. Um, so beyond that, as I said here, you know, it's got role-based access control around security, chat authentication, you can review the audits and see who's been doing what with the storage. Um, you can get Citrix and VMware support, so you can link it into your hypervisor layers. Um, you can do hardware compression, um, RAID control, if, if you, know, you want to look at the RAID controllers, and much, much more. Like I said, we'll be having a look at the web GUI. Loads of information on osnexus.com, so uh, please go and review that if you're going to be going down the route of having a look at uh, IBM software storage and using Quantastore. Um, what are we going to be specifically doing? Well, in order to use Quantastore, then I'm going to order a bare metal server today during this tutorial. I'm going to put a couple of 300 gig SSDs in there, um, a couple of 800 uh, gig SSDs um, to act as a cache layer um, for read or write cache. And then we're going to have a couple of one terabyte SATAs. You know, that could be much, much bigger. You could have a machine, I think the largest machine IBM software provides has 36 platters. So two for OS, maybe six for caching. Um, four read um, and two write, or four write and two read, and then that would leave you with 28 up to 6 terabyte disks on SATA, um, which would give you a lot of space in order to slice that up to deliver out as, um, as uh, iSCSI or NFS or SIFs. So then we're going to order a CentOS uh, 7 virtual machine to be our Quanta client, and we're basically going to do a quick review of the web interface on how to use the storage and create storage pools and storage volumes. We're going to authorize our client machine and then we're going to dive over to the CentOS 7 machine 
and um, we're going to configure it for iSCSI and then we're going to mount the volume that we created in step three. So that's what we're going to be doing today, just to show you quick and simple how to use um, Quantastore for IBM software. Let's get to it. Okay, so welcome back. Um, better start ordering these, um, these machines. So as you can see here, probably on the screen, I've already ordered the bare metal server, but I wanted to take you through what I did to actually go and order that bare metal server. Um, the only reason I've ordered it in advance uh, of making the video is basically I would have, you know, several, uh, up to four hours of delay between ordering it and it actually being available. So I just wanted to get on with it and start diving into that machine and using it. Um, what did I do to order it? Well, as we've done before on many occasions, I clicked on order devices. That brings us to our order screen. And for this particular tutorial, I ordered this machine here with up to 12 drives. Now, I've only ordered a small Quantastore purely because I just want to show for the purposes of illustration how to actually configure and set up a Quantastore, how to order it, etc. You would obviously order something probably far larger. Um, that said, depends on your storage requirements. You may want to go for multiple small quanta stores. Again, from a security point of view, you can use the role based access control within quanta store then to have even more uh, granularity of control around how you want to deliver that storage. So again, it's entirely up to you as a software customer. You might go for many, many small quanta stores or you might go for giant sized uh, quanta stores with the um, up to uh, 36 drives, as you can see here down below. You may go for very large machines. Um, for the purposes of this, I went for this machine here. And that will go, whoops, did that actually click? Yep. And then basically, I put it in London. I then chose uh, 16 gig, that'll be fine. Again, you can get up to, on this machine, 512. But I went for 16 gig, that'd be absolutely fine. The operating system, that's where you will need to choose OS Nexus. And you click on there. I only went for a small four terabyte machine. Again, the licenses just to show you, you can go for a four, a 16, a 28, or a 128 as standard. So I went for a four, that's good on the operating system. And then you get this, you get to configure your hard drives. So what I did was, I chose both the first two disk slots and I assigned 300 gig, uh, was 300s available, um, now 400s, 400 gig SSDs for my operating system. And that would be more than enough. Um, in fact, actually 200 gigs would be more than enough for the operating system. So that's where the operating system is going to go. I then created a RAID group. I'm going to RAID one of those to mirror them, and that's done. Then I chose um, two of these. I think I actually, in the end, just chose one, but it doesn't really matter. Let's choose one for now, and let's make that a... Uh, this is going to be our cache. Whoops. So an 800 gig for the cache. You would probably choose, you know, four, four of those, maybe six of those, and have four of them for uh, read cache. Again, depends on the type of activity that your Quanta store is providing storage for. If it's heavy write, you would have four 800s for write cache and two for read. Uh, you may go for three read, three write, etc., etc. I mean, there's almost infinite number of combinations uh, to go with here. But I just went with one, again, for the purposes of illustration. That will be a cache device for us, for read or write cache. So I'll show you that in the menu. Um, then I chose two of these, and I went with slow one terabyte SATA. And again, created a RAID subsystem on there, RAID 1, and done. Now, if you had more of these, you could do a RAID 10, which would give you striping and mirroring, which is probably what you would do 
for a very large quanta. But that's that's basically what I went for. Um, I left all of the networking the same. Again, when you are doing this properly for your own quanta, you will probably want to go for the 10 gig option down here. And 10 gig would give you obviously much higher throughput to your actual device. You may go for redundant 10 gig, a bonded pair. Um, so I left everything else the same and then I went on and clicked confirm, continue your order and it ordered the machine. So that is what this machine here is. And if I just go into it, we can have a quick look. There it is, it's active, it's up and running. I've had it for a couple of days now. I've been messing around, as you can imagine, getting used to this machine, trying to get ready for the tutorial. Um, and it's a small Quanta Store machine. We have our license, everything's ready to go on that machine. Now what I will do is, while we're here, I'm gonna go back to view all devices, is I said we would also order a small virtual machine. So I'm gonna go for a virtual server. I'm going to go for a quick hourly one. And that brings us to here. And we've done this many, many times. I'm going to put this in London as well, of course, so I can mount it up. Um, I'm going to give it a couple of gig this time. Um, and I'm going to choose CentOS 7. And that's pretty much it. I don't want to do anything else with this machine. I'm just going to get it ordered. Um, Give it a host name. There we go. Give it a host name. I'm going to call it, um, whoops, if I could spell again. I'm going to call it uh, Quanta Client. I'm just going to stick with software.com. I've read and agreed, finalize your order. How much is that gonna cost us? Six cents an hour. There you go. So I'm gonna wait for that machine to be ready. That'll take about eight to 12 minutes. Um, that machine will be ready and then we will be off and running and we can go and have a look at the Quanta Store menu.